Hey guys, how's it going? Solo back, and I gotta say, what an absolutely crazy, crazy day in the stock market. We're gonna talk about Palantir in today's video, but before we do that, I gotta show you some tickers that are just absolutely nuts right now in the stock market. So let's get right into it like we always do, talk a little bit about the market overall. I'm gonna show you the Palantir graph for today on Robinhood. Today is demo day for Palantir. As we speak, as I'm making this video, demo day is going on, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm a little bit bearish right now on Palantir. I'm gonna show you some news articles, show you my updated technical analysis so we can try and predict where Palantir is gonna go for the rest of the week. And like we always do, I'm gonna end the video with the option flow data so you can see how the big money investors were moving on Palantir today and some huge, huge money came in on Palantir. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. But look at this, look at the heat map. You think, ah, eh, just another day in the stock market, right? Mixture of green, mixture of red. Big tech was green. What else is new? Semis had a little bit of a red day. AMD has earnings right now. AMD was up 0.6% during normal market hours. But let me show you why today was such a crazy day in the market. So here's AMD, right? Kind of a flat day. AMD always does this on the day of earnings. They're always just kind of flat. Then take a look at this after hours just spiked all the way up 2.2%, then just fell off a cliff down 1.85%. Then we're rallying back a little bit. So seems like we're still trying to figure out what we're doing with AMD's earnings. It's literally going on as we speak, but we'll have to wait and see how the market opens tomorrow to see what the market thought of AMD's earnings. And look at Microsoft, again, earnings as well, just flat all day long, huge spike within the first 15 minutes, up 6.2%. I mean, again, craziness. Microsoft obviously is having a good earnings session right now. Now let's talk about the legend of GameStop because take a look at this craziness. I mean, GameStop, okay, let this sink in. GameStop's share price is higher than Apple's right now. GameStop, last time I checked, which was pretty much half the price of what it's trading at, was valued at $10 billion. I mean, it's gotta be worth 20 billion right now based on its share price. But look at this, up 90, almost 93% on the day and up another 57% as I'm making this video in after hours trading. I mean, if there was ever a stock that, I mean, GameStop's not going to the moon. It's not going to the sun. It's going to the next galaxy. GameStop is out of control right now, out of control. We do have a member in our Discord server that is just crushing it right now on GameStop. Let me know in the comments below if you have any shares or options open on GameStop right now. I hope you do and I hope you're bullish because the bears right now are just getting crushed on GameStop. Just absolute craziness. Out of curiosity, let's take a look at the option chain just to see how juicy the premiums are right now on GameStop. So let's just say if I want to sell a put at the money for this Friday. Let's see, oh wow. This is so funny. The option chain for GameStop doesn't even go that high because it traded at 238 after hours. The option chain tops out at $200 strike prices. I've never ever had this happen before where the stock mooned so much after hours that they don't have options right now to support it. I mean, the brokers just be losing their minds right now. This is so funny, so crazy. But let's get right into it. You guys are here for Palantir content. So take a look at this. This is why I'm not really liking Palantir right now. And you saw in my other videos recently about Palantir, I raised that question that are we gonna be buying the rumor and selling the news? Because we had a huge spike up in Palantir recently. And today is the day, demo day, that people have been waiting on. And take a look at this. Look how choppy Palantir was trading today. It was just gonna up and down, up and down. The market didn't really know what it wanted to do with it. We did end up down 2.37%. And then again, very choppy right now as demo day is going on. We're up only 0.2% in after hours trading. So very choppy day on the week. You're still looking good. You're still up 30% on the week. But like I said, a lot of this is due to the run-up from the news about Palantir's demo day that broke on the 21st of January. On the month, still looking great, also up 30.7%. Three months, looking even better, up 264%. Let's take a look at the option chain really quickly. What if I want to sell a put, let's say tomorrow morning first thing, I would collect $225 in premium to put up $3,500 in collateral. That would be a return on risk of 
6.4%, which is pretty darn juicy considering that this is a weekly option, so there's only three more trading days left. 6.4% in three days is a lot of juice in my opinion, but let's take a look at the news article that I wanna to talk to you about. There's actually two of them. This first one, again, is out of Benzinga. I found it on Yahoo Finance. They do a good job of collecting all of the good news articles. So I always go to Yahoo Finance, uh, not plugged by them, not sponsored, but if anyone from Yahoo Finance is listening, hit your boy up. But listen, this article is titled Palantir to debut new software apps at inaugural demo day. So what they're saying is that Palantir kind of gave a little bit of a teaser about what the demo day is gonna be. And that caused a little bit of a run up, actually not a little bit, a lot of run up on Palantir stock. So what they're saying is that they're gonna demo or show how their Gotham and Foundry platforms work. And they said they're also gonna demo other software from this modular strategy. So right here it says, investors have yet to see demonstrations of Palantir software platforms and their applications. So what they're gonna do is that they're gonna show how these platforms in addition to their applications for government agencies, manufacturers, and commercial customers work, they're gonna show investors how its continuous delivery software Apollo powers Foundry and Gotham in any environment. So that obviously was music to some investors' ears because we can finally see what this company does. Now, here's an article that came out today from Insider Monkey. Again, I found it on Yahoo Finance titled, Is Palantir Technology Stock a Buy for 2021? If you've seen my videos in the past, you know I showed one article a while back that basically said that Palantir was one of their top 10 stocks for this year. So there is a, I guess, hedge fund, Tau Value, and they put out a letter today because they have Palantir Technologies in their portfolio. And right there it says, in the last three months, Palantir stock gained basically 224%. And here's what Tau Value had to say. So they're saying Palantir is an opportunistic position Government and military works are mission critical and require fundamentally different design and execution than consumer tech. And they're saying, if you look at prediction modeling, consumer tech solutions like lending, shopping recommendations, they largely try to minimize error on average. Yet such prediction would be useless if not dangerous for military missions. So on the way to the public market, Palantir seemed to get controversies over its unethical collaboration with ICE and its scalability. But they think that the founder and CEO, Alex Karp, is what they say a thoughtful leader and the ethics arguments were overblown. And say they say the operating metrics will not be as good as traditional SaaS or software as a service models. And they see customization as a necessity and rather a source of switching cost moat. So it also says competitors seem to be yielding market share to Palantir due to ideological biases. So they're saying Palantir is a unique asset and decided to build a small position after its underwhelming direct listing debut. So they're obviously bullish on Palantir. And of course they are gonna be bullish because they already own a position, but take it for what it's worth. I think they raised some good points as far as their reasoning behind why they're bullish on Palantir. Let's look at the chart to see if we can update the technical analysis right now. So here's where we left it a few days ago. And you can see by my arrows, I thought after this huge green candle on January 22nd, that we'd have a little bit of a pullback, maybe a little bit of profit taking, and then bounce off support around $31 and continue up. Well, that pullback never actually happened. And I'm wondering, maybe is this demo day the source of the pullback? So I'm going to stick with it. And I'm gonna say, you know what, I think we might have a pullback maybe tomorrow. Let's see what happens just because not only was there a lot of choppy trading today, but I'm gonna show you the option flow data in a minute to see if I can convince you. But of course, nothing I say is ever financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. These are just my opinions. So always do your own due diligence and take whatever I say with a grain of salt. So I do think we might have a little bit of a pullback. You can see not a lot of a trading range today. I think the market was just kind of waiting for the end of the day for demo day to see what they want to do. But we've had three green days in a row, a lot of volume, not necessarily today, but the past two days. So we'll have to see what Palantir does after hours once demo day is done and in pre-market trading tomorrow. So I'm not going to really make any adjustments. Maybe I'll move up my FIB levels to the more recent highs like so and see. And it's actually interesting that the top of the candle on the 22nd lines up pretty much with the 23.6% Fibonacci level. So maybe instead of $31, maybe we'll bounce off 32 if we have a pullback. We'll just have to wait and see. Let me show you the trade UI option flow data 
to see what the big money investors were doing on Palantir today. So here's the trade UI program that I used to look at my option flow data. If you're interested, the link is in the video description below. We're looking at Palantir today. You can see 74 orders came in. And so, so we don't have to look at all of them. I sorted them by the top money orders. And take a look at this. If you look at these top orders, I mean, this is from $570,000 up to over $2 million. The red boxes are put options. So the vast majority of the big money orders, they're all puts. I mean, look at this, 33 strike put, 34 strike put, 33, 34, 35, 35, 35. So they're all at the money puts. So that tells me that the big money investors or the biggest of the big money investors are kind of playing the downside. They're either bearish or they're hedging their bullish bets. Now, I do want to clarify in all of my prior videos, whenever you see or whenever I see an in the money call option like this one, I've been saying that that's a hedge and I it was pointed out by a viewer in the YouTube comments, shout out to Elvis. He's corrected me and I think I was not using the words properly. So it's not necessarily a hedge. I think it would be more accurate to say that they are still bullish on the position, but not as bullish as if they purchased an out of the money option. Because the strike price of $30 is less than what the stock was currently trading at, this option is already in the money. So it's still a bullish call option, but it's just not as bullish as if they purchased a strike that was higher than the current share price. So I hope that clears that up. I'm gonna fix my videos going forward. So this is not necessarily a hedge. I guess what I meant to say was that it's not as bullish as it could have been. But these put options that they bought are certainly either hedges or people just being flat out bearish on Palantir. So this is why, look at the TA, I think we're due for a pullback. Looking at what the big money was doing on Palantir today with all these put options, I think they're also expecting a pullback. Looking at how choppy Palantir was trading today, seemed like the market didn't know what to do with it. So maybe this is going to be a case of buy the rumor, meaning the run up up until demo day, then sell the news, meaning once demo day happens, i.e. right now, we'll have a sell off tomorrow if the market is not overwhelmed by great news. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts on Palantir. Let me know your thoughts on GameStop. As always, make sure you join the Discord server if you're not in there already. Add me on Reddit, Twitter, Stock Twits, and even Instagram. But most importantly, I hope you're all making money and I hope we have a green trading week. Happy trading, everybody.